Here we're going to begin looking at the notion of a compact set of real numbers. And I should stress here that there are lots of different equivalent ways to define compact sets of real numbers. And we're using the one that goes in line with the textbook that I'm teaching my course out of. But if you're taking this from someone else, then you might be using a different definition. And furthermore, this de definition is specialized to the real numbers. If you're looking at this from a more general topology point of view, then the definition is also slightly different. So let's look at this definition. So we say that K, a subset of R, is compact if for all sequences contained in K, so I've written that as the set containing A sub N as N goes from one to infinity, there is a subsequence A sub N sub K such that that subsequence converges to a limit L which is inside of K. Okay, so that's kind of a mouthful. So we would like something that's a little simpler to work with and that's exactly what we'll prove in this video. It's the following classic theorem. That says that K, a subset of R, is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded. So this is a nice if and only if statement, which means we could really just exchange the definition of compactness to this notion of being closed and bounded. Okay, so let's look at the proof of this. Since this is if and only if we need to do two directions, let's do this forward direction first. So we'll suppose K, a subset of R, is compact and X is a limit point of K. So if our goal is to show that K is closed and bounded, then we need to show that it's first closed and that it's bounded. So in order for it to be closed, it must contain all of its limit points. So we have started with a limit point from K. Now we want to show that this limit point is inside of K. Okay, great. So now since X is a limit point of K, that means there exists a sequence I'll write it as a sub n as n goes from 1 to infinity completely contained in k with the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equal to x. So if you recall, we had this sort of sequential definition of a limit point as well from a couple of video videos ago. And that is exactly exhibited here. So if we've got a limit point of a set, then we can find a sequence inside that set that converges to that limit point. Now what we can do is just take the trivial subsequence of this and notice that via the trivial subsequence, and what I mean by that, it's just the subsequence containing all of the elements of this subsequence. Um, we have X is in K itself because this says that there's a subsequence that converges to something in K, but notice all subsequences of a convergent sequence will converge to the same thing. So that means the subsequence that converges must converge to something in K, but that, that's X. So look at what we started with. We started with X as a limit point of K, and then we ended up with X is in K. So what that means is that K is closed. Good. Now we need to show that K is bounded, and we're going to do that by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, suppose K is unbounded, and find, let's say, some new numbers, B sub N, as N goes from 1 to infinity, such that the absolute value of B sub N is bigger than N. And this is going to be true for all natural numbers in. So if K is unbounded, this is most definitely possible. Okay, great. But now notice that this means that every subsequence of this is also unbounded. And that's easy to see if you just look at the careful definition of a subsequence. So every subsequence, maybe we'll write it like this, b sub n sub k is unbounded, and that's by our construction of this sequence b sub n. But 
an unbounded sequence cannot converge. So now we know that every subsequence does not converge. But what that tells us is that K is not compact and that is our contradiction. And what did we contradict? We contradicted our supposition right here, which was K was unbounded. So that means we have K is closed and bounded and we've finished this first direction. Now we're ready for the other direction. So we want to start with K being closed and bounded and prove that means it's compact via this definition of compactness over here. So let's suppose K is closed and bounded. And since we're working with this definition of compactness over here, we need to start with a sequence in K. And we have A n, as n goes from one to infinity, is a sequence inside of K. Hey, I need, I need the chalkboard. Okay, so now by the boundedness of K, we can do the following. So since K is bounded, there exists some real number n sorry, m such that k is inside of the open interval minus m to m. So that's like equivalent to the definition of bounded. But let's recall that this sequence was also a subset of k, which means this sequence is also a subset of this interval minus m to m. But what that tells us is that the absolute value of a n is less than m and that's true for all natural numbers n. Great. But what that tells us is that the sequence itself is bounded. So a sub n as n goes from 1 to infinity is a bounded sequence. But we earlier proved that every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. So that is something that we'll write down now. It has a convergent subsequence. We'll go ahead and call that a sub n sub k, and here k is running from 1 to infinity. Great. And so let's say that a sub n sub k converges to x. But what that tells us is that x is a limit point of k. And that's by this like sequential definition of limit points. So x is a limit point of k. But then, since k is closed, it contains all of its limit points. So that means that x is inside of k. Again, because k is closed. But then, look at what we've just done. We've taken an arbitrary sequence and we found it a, and we found a convergent subsequence that converges to something inside of K. But that's exactly what we need to satisfy this definition of compactness over here. And so that finishes this backwards direction of the proof. That's a good place to stop.